More than a year after Starship's first launch, SpaceX has finally achieved what it has long dreamed of, returning the Super Heavy rocket booster to the launch site and catching it in mid-air using a giant Mechazilla system. This remarkable achievement will be the perfect stepping stone for SpaceX's more ambitious move later in the year, the launch of Flight 6. In today's episode, we'll dive into the timeline of Flight 6, its role in SpaceX's long-term plans, and more. SpaceX is wasting no time getting into operations for Flight 6, which is set no earlier than November 11th. The next flight will be a chance for another pair, Booster 13 and Ship 31, to shine. On September 18th, or nearly one month before Flight 5, Ship 31 underwent its static fire test. Only nine days after Flight 5, Booster 13 rolled out to the launch site and was placed on the orbital launch mount. SpaceX then completed a 33-engine static fire on October 24th or 11 days after the latest flight. The booster appeared to complete the test without issue, promising Flight 6 is coming soon, as Elon Musk said. These moves also mark SpaceX's record turnaround for the pad. It only took nine days to prepare it for a possible static fire after Flight 5, because the last flight didn't cause any major damage to the system. At present, B-13 is at the production site and is ready for flight readiness modifications ahead of IFT-6, including one last check, and install the hot staging ring. Then roll the booster along with the ship back to the launch site for final testing and Flight 6. Talking about the hot staging ring, SpaceX recently salvaged the hot staging ring of Flight 5 in the Gulf of Mexico. It can be said that this is the first time that the company has recovered every part of a booster intact, setting a new precedent for SpaceX's engineering reliability. Due to the intense heat from the ship's engines, the ring is slightly warped, but its overall integrity is a promising sign for future missions. SpaceX's salvage of the hot staging ring has raised many questions about whether it intends to reuse it for Flight 6. Why not? The hot staging ring works based on simple physics, much like screwing a bottle cap. So if it remains intact with only surface scorching, reusing it would be perfectly normal. On the other hand, some may think SpaceX brought it back just for display. So how about you? Reuse or display? Don't hesitate to comment your thoughts below. As for Starship 31, its engines also need testing for landing capabilities. Moreover, the heat shield and flap system should be inspected. It seems Starship 31 still has older tiles and SpaceX might replace them with new armor, similar to Starship 30, to ensure a successful landing in the next flight. One more piece of evidence for the feasibility of the November launch date of Flight 6 is the FAA's approval and regulations. SpaceX has secured FAA approval for both Flight 5 and Flight 6 simultaneously. The license, issued on the 12th of October 2024, covers the flight profiles for both missions, suggesting similarities between the two tests. This dual approval streamlines the regulatory process and potentially allows for a quicker turnaround between flights. This means Flight 6 could repeat what happened on Flight 5. In the upcoming launch, we'll witness another attempt to catch the Super Heavy booster with the Mechazilla arm, further validating SpaceX's ability to master this technology. However, upgrades are still necessary to prevent issues like the small fire that occurred during the previous landing attempt. Shortly after Flight 5, Elon Musk revealed a detailed update on Super Heavy. He first mentioned, some of the outer engine nozzles are a little warped from high heating and strong aero forces, easily fixable. He later clarified, just inspected the Starship booster, which the arms have now placed back in its launch mount. Looks great. A few outer engine nozzles are warped from heating and some other minor issues, but these are easily addressed. This slight warping of the engine nozzles was expected, given the intense heat and aero forces endured during flight, but thankfully no explosions or critical failures occurred. Any other minor issues were likely related to sensitive systems in the upper part of the rocket, but thanks to the intact landing, evaluation and refurbishment will be more straightforward. It explains for Musk's confident assertion that the issues are easily fixable and addressed. After mastering the booster catch, SpaceX will challenge itself by catching Starship's upper stage in early 2025. Landing Starship in the ocean this year will allow SpaceX to improve the reliability and precision of this maneuver. Starship 30 achieved a controlled vertical landing during Flight 5, and this will be an opportunity to further refine that process. Flight 6 will be a crucial stepping stone for SpaceX's broader objectives over the next years and beyond. 
The first goal is to achieve a full Starship landing and then build the orbital refueling system. Refueling is critical as Starship consumes nearly all its fuel reaching orbit. For longer missions like the Moon or Mars, additional fuel will be needed to extend its range and ensure a safe return. If SpaceX successfully achieves full Starship reusability in early next year, they could conduct an attempt on the ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer to the same year, according to the user Alex. SpaceX demo of Starship's ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer next year will likely entail twin Starship launches and booster recoveries at Starbase. In-orbit refueling is indeed a complex technology, but once SpaceX can master it, it can confidently enter NASA's Artemis III, which is expected to launch in September 2026. As the first crewed landing on the moon since Apollo 17, Artemis III will request at least 15 starships to execute. Starship cannot fly directly to the moon but must refuel in Earth orbit before setting out for deep space. The Starship human landing system is just one vehicle requiring a single launch, but adding in all the launches needed for the fuel depot takes the total required into the high teens. The success of Artemis III will pave the way for more ambitious missions to the Moon and Mars. It's remarkable that a single flight to close out the year could pave the way for so many future milestones. Of course, that's the long-term story, but in the short term, if this mission launches before the year ends, it will set new records for SpaceX. The time between between flights 5 and 6 is shrinking. If flight 6 happens in mid-November, the gap will be around one month, beating the previous record of just over two and a half months between flights 3 and 4. The launch of flight 6 will contribute to making the last months of 2024 even hotter than ever. Blue Origin's New Glenn appears to be scheduled for a November launch this year. We'll carry the prototype Blue Ring payload tug and payload hoisting platform in addition to serving as New Glenn's first National Security Space Launch certification flight. This debut flight is more than just a technical milestone. It would wrap up the long-term delay of this most anticipated rocket. Development of the New Glenn rocket started before 2013 and was formally announced in 2016, with an inaugural flight planned for 2020. After multiple delays, as of October 2024, the first launch is expected to take place no earlier than November 2024. New Glenn is similar to its main competitor, Falcon 9. Like Falcon 9, New Glenn's first stage contains engines that can be relit during descent to allow a soft landing and the rocket has six extendable landing legs that deploy just before touchdown. Meanwhile, Falcon 9 has four legs. While SpaceX currently lands its rockets on drone ships, Blue Origin also plans for New Glenn to land on a mobile, sea-based platform. The current New Glenn landing platform ship, Jacqueline, named for Bezos' mother, measures an impressive 115 meters by 45 meters in size, larger than the platforms used by SpaceX. Alongside SpaceX and Blue Origin, after some issues with the CERT-2 mission, ULA has maintained the goal to launch the first national security mission, USSF-106, on its Vulcan Centaur rocket at the end of the year. On October 21st, ULA shared photos of the 33.3-meter booster being hoisted into the vertical integration facility to begin the stacking process. By the 25th, its 11.7-meter Centaur 5 upper stage was added along with the solid rocket booster, being followed by payload fairings. The beginning of the rocket's integration comes as the U.S. Space Force continues to review data from the CERT-2 mission, which launched on October 4th from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.